This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. We are glad to have you with us this morning. Iran, presidential politics, highway funding. There's a lot happening in politics despite Congress being on break. I'm joined this morning by Congressman French Hill. He represents the second district in central Arkansas. Welcome. And the kids tell me you're out on recess. Is this what you call it? Hey, district, district work period. I've been uh, home uh, every weekend since January, but three weekends. And so it's great to have this extended period of time at home. And I've been all over the district and will continue to. Well, one of the things you have talked about pretty much everywhere you've been in the district is what's going on overseas between yep. the U.S. and Iran negotiations, the deal that Congress is going to ultimately uh, get some say so on. You disagree with the negotiation, the negotiated deal. Tell me what do you want to see out of a deal if yeah. this one's going to get rejected? Yeah. What I think uh, the president laid out two uh, stark uh, objectives. One was to deny Iran uh, from getting a nuclear weapon and two, to make sure we had any time, anywhere uh, inspections of the program. And his proposal does neither one of those things. It does not eliminate Iran's uh, path to a nuclear weapon, and it does not offer any time, anywhere sanctions, or any time, anywhere inspections. What I'd like to see is that we keep a sanctions regime up. We have that with our Western partners, even if it's not universal, and that we bring Iran back to the table and get a better deal on the release of their money that's been frozen and their sanctions relief over time with more milestones. And then, then we have a verification system on inspections that I think is more robust. That's what I'd like to see. So what, how do you see this playing out? Do you see when you guys go back from recess, you're ultimately there's going to be some votes that are set. Do you yeah. see it failing at this point in time? Uh, I see vote counting still going on. Uh, and I see uh, the Congress, in my view, I think the votes are there to um, uh, disagree with the president on the agreement, but I don't know that we have the votes to override a potential presidential veto. And I think that vote counting is still going as we, as we speak here today. But I hear uh, nothing encouraging as I travel in the district. And I think there are concrete reasons on how we could do a, reach a better deal that's more uh, successful for our partners, the region, and for the U.S. Let's move on to something else you made some news on earlier uh, in the last week or so. You actually called, uh, along with some of your colleagues in the House, for the resignation of the IRS commissioner. Obviously, there's been plenty of uh, headlines yeah. surrounding yeah. that. Yeah. Um, do, do you have somebody in place or in mind that you'd like to see replaced, or you just want what the current administration to remove them? The current commissioner came in in uh, December of 2013, and he had a chance to bring fresh air. This is post the Lewis... Uh, Lois Lerner email uh, fiasco, and he had a chance to bring fresh air, and he didn't do it. He's really actually been part of the cover-up. He's told Congress on numerous uh, occasions, you have all the emails, we will get you all the emails. And then the U.S. Treasury's Inspector General went into the IRS and said, no, that's not the fact. You didn't even look in five of the six possible places where those emails might be stored. So in my view, I think you ought to resign because I think he's lost credibility in leading. And when you don't have leadership in an organization, you need to step aside. And that, I think that's where we are with this commission. There's no confidence in that. Exactly. I mean, I, my signing that letter and calling for that resignation is, is a vote of no confidence. And uh, this spring, we've had this uh, huge number of people, Americans, that have had their identity stolen uh, from the IRS. From the IRS, mm -hmm. the, supposedly the safest place to have your data stored. So. Uh, I just don't have confidence in his ability to lead the IRS forward. Do you think that this is systemic, though? I mean, will just a change in leadership change that culture and change the results that you're seeing? Or do you just put another face up there that could try and still fail? Good question. Uh, the IRS is ill-led. I truly believe that. But it also has structural challenges, particularly in the IT area. They need to invest in information technology. They need to have better audit technology. But it's hard when you don't have credibility to come and ask Congress for the money to do that if you don't have leadership capability and don't have the clout to get it done. I don't think this commissioner's got that. Kind of a reverse chicken and egg thing kind of going on here because you guys are probably not going to appropriate money for those improvements that you recognize need to be made. Yeah, and I've argued that they should be made. Okay. I don't believe agencies, uh, even if you disagree with the direction of an agency, I don't believe you should starve that agency in that, in that core IT arena that really speaks to the safety and soundness of its constituents. In this case, every taxpayer uh, in the country. I think that's important. You guys have done what they call kick the can down the road on highway funding. Even down a lot highway. of members, exactly, down the highway there. A paved road it was. Yeah. Um, 
You remain optimistic that a multi-year highway funding bill still could emerge from this Congress. Why do you, why do yeah. you think that? Yeah, uh, I hope so, and here's why. Earlier in the year, Paul Ryan, uh, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, has been attempting to negotiate a transaction with senators that would produce a five-year deal with a financing plan that the House and Senate can both agree to. And, uh, what are the elements of that, just in a nutshell? I don't know, oh. uh, but well, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know fully. Uh, I will say I know a core element, which is that Paul Ryan believes that he might be able to get a territorial tax change, which does allow us to deal with this uncompetitive corporate tax rate that America faces compared to uh, our global competitors, and put that in a package uh, that would fund highways, change the territoriality of corporate tax rates, include some extenders on things that are perennial challenges like the R&D tax credit, and put that package before the Congress before the end of the year. Ryan wanted more time, and that's what's led us to this uh, twice now modest kind of 60-day movement to try to give those negotiators time to, uh, to put together a big deal. If they don't get it, then what we'll get is an FY15 level of appropriated spending for highways about for the next year, just like we've had. And it's not satisfactory to me because it doesn't allow us to do the kind of planning well, that yeah, we want exactly. to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this past week, um, Ted Cruz in the state of Arkansas. You're an H.W. Bush guy, so oh, are, you, are you in the Jeb Bush camp already? Uh, well, I think uh, many of us in our delegation are proud of our native son, Mike Huckabee, okay. for running uh, for president. I thought uh, Governor Huckabee did a uh, splendid job showing his knowledge of the issues and his sense of humor uh, at the debates uh, last week. But I think what the debates uh, trigger for me is that we've got a great pool of candidates on the Republican side of the aisle that have wonderful resumes that are out pitching uh, their ability to lead this country. I don't see that sort of competitive uh, spirit <laughs> over in the opposition party. Well, you shouldn't be worried about that right now. Well, it's a GOP I'm, primary you should be worried about. True, but I'm a person who likes to see everybody out there competing and having a good time. And I, I do admire uh, the talents, the skills, and abilities of the folks that we've got out on the stage for the Republican Party. Donald Trump, what's, when does he drop out and when does he be run, make an independent run? Uh, you know, I don't know what, uh, how to answer either one of those questions, but I'll tell you what Donald Trump as a business guy taps into uh, is the uh, discontent out there in our, uh, our, among our citizens for a lackluster economy, a government that's too big and tries too much, and he's tapped into that a lot of frustrated voters, and because he's not a career politician. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> All True. right. You're not a career politician either, but you are a politician. I appreciate you being here, Congressman Frenchill.